I've been playing this indie game lately called Silver Grapple, a side-scrolling platformer with heavy focus on using a grappling hook to swing yourself around your environment. The entire game was made by just a single guy, Jamie Rolo, who, full disclosure, sent me a review code of the game for free, but don't think that's going to affect my opinion on this game at all, because believe me, people send me review codes of their games all the time, and I simply don't have the time to play most of these games, so only if it's something I truly think is pretty sick am I going to play it, let alone do a video on it. The game starts off with you working in a laboratory, I'm guessing as a janitor because that's your idle animation. If you don't do anything for a bit, you pull out a mop and start mopping away. Soon enough you'll find a grappling hook and you'll be swinging around your environment. You can aim the grappling hook in all 8 directions, uh, even 360 if you're using a control stick actually, but I finished the game just fine with only 8 so don't feel intimidated if you decide to use the d-pad instead of the stick. The gameplay is remarkably simple but incredibly effective. All you really do is grapple onto walls, ceilings, and objects in general to try and swing yourself around each stage. The best way I could describe this game I think is Super Meat Boy mixed with Bionic Command. Mando, and it really is similar to Super Meat Boy, you know, momentum-based, fast-paced, challenging platforming, and if you die, boom, back to a checkpoint, no waiting, no loading, instant retry. The game gets really difficult, but it never becomes punishing. It's never eager to make you lose progress, and to make things even faster, there's a restart button that'll warp you back to the nearest checkpoint, so you won't have to wait until you fall all the way down if you mess up a jump. Instead, just hit the button and you're already back at it. And of course, with fair difficulty comes hella tight controls, and an overall great game feel. The game's graphics definitely aren't going to be winning any awards, but the visuals easily make up for that with its incredibly fluid animation. Whenever you swing, your character does this flip. It makes each and every successful swing all the more gratifying, and it makes your control over the character's motion feel very, very smooth. I must have seen this animation at least a hundred times, but I still try to get it to happen when walking through hallways just so I can see it again. There's something immensely satisfying about a flip, you know, like in Rayman 2, the flip he does at the peak of his jump. You know, the more I think about it, the more I realize just how genius this flip is. I mean, it's a lot more than just eye candy like you'd think. This flipping animation is exactly what gives the game such a great feel for control. The animation will play at different speeds depending on how fast your character is moving, and because of this, you get this double layer of visual communication in regard to your momentum, and I think that's what makes the gameplay feel so smooth. You not only get to see how fast you're moving, but this flip makes you feel how fast your character is moving, and in turn, you can better judge where you'll have to place your grappling hook to manipulate that momentum into different directions. But of course, there's a little more to the game than just grappling. As you progress through the game, it'll introduce several more stage gimmicks. This could be as simple as a bounce pad to something a little more elaborate like a speed pad or sliding on water. Again, the game is all about momentum. These stage gimmicks merely provide you with that momentum in different ways, but what you do with that momentum is entirely on you. You'll discover more items that give you new abilities as the game goes goes on, things ranging from the before-mentioned water sliding and running to breathing underwater. Just like any Metroidvania game, there's definitely a sense of bettering yourself, becoming more and more capable, and in turn, being able to explore more and more of the map. Speaking of which, the game's map is gigantic, and there's definitely elements of Metroidvania here. However, the game is relatively linear for the most part. There's plenty of freedom though, oftentimes you'll decide where exactly you want to explore, but once you're in a stage, it's all just straightforward, challenging platforming from then on. You'll also unlock teleporters for quick travel across the map, which makes returning to previously explored areas a piece of cake. The game does go full on Metroidvania towards the end though, you'll have to scan the entire world map for any unexplored areas, trying to find several key cards to unlock hidden doors, and in turn activating several pieces of machinery to open the door to the final level. I really wasn't expecting this game to have much of a story, but there is one here. It all revolves around trying to escape this underground lab after a strange tremor traps everyone inside. Along the way, you'll meet different workers and scientists that all know more and more about what exactly is going on and what exactly was going on prior to the earthquake. The game is fairly light on the story. There's not a ton of cutscenes. It easily takes a backseat in favor of the gameplay, but as per usual in Metroidvanias, there are notes and journals you can collect that flesh it all out if you're into that kind of thing. If not, then don't read them. It's all optional. The story more or less is what you make of 
of it. If you want to put forth the time and read the material, it can be this big interesting thing about these scientists that were developing this controversial substance, and if you're not into it, it can be as simple as a janitor dude trying to get out of a lab. Now, a word of warning for people watching, this game is extremely difficult. It'll range from challenging to hard in the very beginning, but the final stages of the game, these are something straight out of hell. I'm talking like nearly frame perfect jumps. Not like one frame perfect jump and then you get a checkpoint. I'm talking like up to six remarkably accurate grapples you'll have to make all in a row. I mean, it, it's clearly not impossible. I was able to beat the game after trying so many times and I'm not like the best guy around at video games, but be wary that you're in for a freaking challenge if you decide to pick this game up. <gasps> I really want to see speedruns of this game. I see speedruns of Super Meat Boy, and those are mind-blowing when I see those, but, like, speedruns of this game would be nuts. You could bring this to AGDQ 2018 or something, dude. That'd be sick. Silver Grapple is really addicting. I mean, I could not put this game down. I was playing it literally all day trying to finish it. It's probably the most satisfying and challenging 2D platformer game I've played since Super Meat Boy, and in turn, I would easily say it's a must-play title for anyone who's a fan of Meat Boy. The game is now available on Steam for just $15. You gotta check it out. If you're itching for a really good challenging platformer, look no further. This game kicks ass. Yeah, Bionic Commando meets Super Meat Boy. I think I'll stick with that description. I don't think anything really sums it up as well as that does. Uh, yeah, I have not been this sucked into an indie game in a long time. At least not a platforming indie game. It is as addicting as it is satisfying. So, y'all better grapple your butt over to Steam and... That was stupid. <laughs>